Alrighty, Mike Parallax and Michelle Parallax here to entertain you with the help of, uh, oh, pardon me, Stewie, <laughs> Stewie. <laughs> um, I think my sister Michelle is a little bit shocked right now because just before I hit record, she, uh, Obviously hasn't been watching my YouTube videos. <laughs> she's shocked. Uh, she's just been informed I'm voting for Donald Trump. This Mike guy that's over the, all over the TV. Mike? He's just a congressman. He ain't a president. Mike who? I can't remember. Pence? Mike Pence is the vice president. Hmm. <laughs> but anyways, uh... We're going to uh, uh, talk about some fun stuff, <laughs> because the tension around here is a little too much. <laughs> Anyways, uh, recently um, I acquired the movie Hellraiser Judgment, which, I, which came out in 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yep. Which I have not had a chance to see yet, although despite being a pretty hardcore fan of the Hellraiser movie series. Um, I've been making a conscious effort to avoid looking at stuff about it on social media. <sighs> like Jim Carrey, he's trying to talk so much that he <laughs> run out of air, you know. Anywho, uh, <laughs> I've been making a conscious effort to avoid uh, looking at stuff on social media about it because I know this guy says it sucks, that guy says it sucks. I think uh, part of the problem is uh, the Hellraiser movie series skewed away from the gore that was you know, pretty uh, distinctive in the first couple of movies. Um, definitely skewed away from that and became more about the psychological aspect of horror storytelling, which I welcomed with open arms. You remember when we saw Hellraiser? Probably not, because we were kids when Paulie took us to take, see that. 1989, Ashley Lawrence. I was uh, ten, 9 or 10, and I had a crush on Ashley Lawrence because, well, I was 9 years old, and it was different because although she wasn't the uh, heroine of the first Hellraiser movie, she was definitely the heroine of the second one, Hellraiser Hellbound, Hellraiser 2. <sighs> but uh, the thing that always stood out for me is uh, some of the, what I regarded as uh, thought-provoking dialogue from the Pinhead character. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I forget which one, I forget which movie in the series it is, but at one, some point he does say, Ah! Pain. <laughs> Pain? How dare you use that word? I am Pain. <laughs> I'm no Doug Bradley, but... <laughs> but no, over the series, uh, some pretty thought-provoking dialogue has come out of the Pinhead character. Uh, for example, Hellraiser Debtor, the one with Kari War, which was probably one of, an example of probably her better acting work, in my opinion. Uh, but Hellraiser Debtor, when Pinhead does away with the antagonist, you know, in the story, and he turns to all the kids who were following the guy in his cult, and he says to him, This world has obviously disappointed you all. Well, allow me to finish what he began. <laughs> and then, whoosh, out come the chains out of the wall. 
Out come the chains out of the walls. <laughs> I have asthma, so I... Out come the chains out of the walls and slaughter all the kids. It's kind of sad because they're kids and they're, they're lost souls. <laughs> and, uh... The thing I liked about uh, Hellraiser Bloodline, which would have been the fourth one, was it, uh... Not only was it an explanational story, explaining where the box came from in the 1700s, the toy maker, um, and then a little bit of storytelling in the middle there, and then it, the movie gave such closure to the series as a whole, because then every other movie they made before Hellraiser Bloodline, and every movie they've made since is all what happened in the middle. I can't say, I can't really say yet for judgment, because I haven't seen it yet. But, uh, um, but all the other movies, uh, all, it's all storytelling that happened in the middle. Bloodline gave such closure to the series. Because you, you see the original story, the toy maker in the 1700s, how the box came into being, and then it ends on the space station in the future where man uses his technology to fool evil. I just love that premise. And it gives such... It, and it's the only movie where you actually hear a little bit of fear in, pin, in the character Pinhead. This is not a room. This is a holocaust. When he's referring to the, the, the uh, uh, creation that the guy's making with the lights and everything. Because, yeah, it's his call. It's, the, it's evil's holocaust. It's pure evil's holocaust. But you have to see the movie Bloodline to really... And I think that's why people bitch about the Hellraiser series. Because they don't understand the psychological aspect of it. They're all, they're all, pre, they're all preoccupied with, how come, there's, how come it's such a, such a, a, a low body count? How come there's not gallons of blood? You want gallons of blood? Watch Evil Dead. That's a horror comedy. If you want, you know, gallons and gallons of blood and ga gallons of puke and piss and whatever, watch one of those movies. Hellraiser is more psychological. That's my opinion, folks. <laughs> but most people, they, they don't, they don't, you know, they want the, the body count and the freaking, you know, the mindless violence and horror. <sighs> and then there's Hellraiser, Hell on Earth, Hellraiser 3, which that whole movie, the whole, to me, as a fan of the series, the whole point of Hellraiser 3 was to resurrect the Pinhead character. That, that's the, and what do they do? They made him a Vietnam vet. That was the only way you're going to make this a, such a character as his sympathetic. Now, in the movies that followed the series after Hellraiser Bloodline, certainly uh, the help the Pinhead character became more of a Grim Reaper like character, kind of kind of like a spokesman for hell and evil, which again I welcomed. I didn't even know about the fifth one, Hellraiser Infernal, until we uh, happened to be at a <laughs> Blockbuster one day. And I happened to see a secondhand VHS copy of it, and I'm like, the hell, there's a new Hellraiser movie? How'd this happen? How did I, how did I not know about this? And that's the one with the, oh God, I don't know the guy's name. He's in all those freaking Angel, sh that Angel show. It's a... Uh, uh, I think it was a spin-off of the Buffy, the Vampire Slayer show. I didn't watch those shows, but from what I, what I gather. Anyways, that actor is in the story. And, uh, yeah, he is the embodiment of somebody who just takes their own sins, their own wrongdoings, and just justifies it after justifying it, after justifying it, after justifying it, for suit his own desires. Much like the left. <laughs> Much like the Democratic Party. <laughs> That's my nature, folks. I gotta turn it political. <laughs> oh. That's the problem with the left. And that's why I said Joe Biden is, you know, Donald Trump is the lesser of two evils. 
Joe Biden, and the problem with the Democratic Party is they have let the left come to pass. They have cow kowtowed to the left so much now that a person like me uh, and a lot of people, there's a walk away movement. People are just walking away from the Democratic Party. Done. Um, I thought it was the party for the little man, the, you know, the, 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 the workers. No, it's not. It's the party of big government uh, obtaining and keeping its power and, ma and maintaining its control over a, the free hearts and mind of a people. That's, that's what it is, you know. And we're talking about Hellraiser, and <laughs> I'm getting political. <laughs> but, uh, okay, back to Hellraiser, so... Um, each of the movies had uh, um, a lot of uh, um, things, not not just one-liners, but even but dialogue too, from the Pinhead character, especially Infernal. Now, well, all of them actually, but my favorite line from Inferno is when he finally. Spoiler alert! <laughs> um, but he finally, uh, uh, the guy's finally. He's he's act he's pursuing this case as if trying to find this killer who is cutting the fingers off this little kid little kid. Well, he comes to realize this little kid is himself, and he's killing his own innocence by his sin after sin after sin after justification after justification after justification. Much like the left, much like why we are in this predicament in our world today. But it finally gets to the point where <laughs> this, this kid's down to one finger now, and this guy's, you know, <laughs> the guy's still in the dark that he is the perpetrator. He is the one killing his own innocence by his crime, his, his sins, his crime. Neglecting his wife, neglecting his daughter, you know, uh, uh, justifying his actions because he's a cop, and, uh, he, you know, he's entitled to a couple of, uh, uh, indulgence in life. Yeah, that's what I just God, it's been years since I've seen the movie, but as I'm talking about it, I'm remembering stuff. But man, yeah, and then it finally gets to the point where <laughs> says, uh, tells them straight out. Finally, has to tell them straight out. You know, you're killing your own in innocent. Your flesh is killing your spirit. Yeah, something like that. He says, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, Hellraiser Infernal. <laughs> but that's just it. That's why people bitch about the Hellraiser series. It's nothing like the first one. And the first one is a classic, will always be. What Clyde Barker started with those first two movies you know, was awesome. <laughs> but... Uh... Yeah, hopefully I'll get a chance of time this week and finally check this one out. Yeah, four years, I'm finally going to get to see it. <laughs> and then I'll, you know, get other people's opinions of it on social media. Because I went straight to DVD, no theater. Um, I believe this did go straight to DVD, but I, uh, I, every Halloween I kept looking for it. They had like bargain bins and, you know, department stores and whatnot, but I, I never came across it, so finally I, I had to just order it. <sighs> Hellraiser Hellworld was a different, was a whole different thing. Hellraiser Hellworld was kind of a spoof of itself, and it it's just so brilliantly done. I mean, the characters in the Hellraiser series, in this world, Hell World, th that movie, were fictitious, and only in only a reality in the minds of these again self-centered characters. In that one, I think I believe it was the dad, and him using his own. Uh, um, him using, that's right, his son was a Hellraiser fan. And, uh, who, I guess, 
I forget if he killed his son or his son killed himself because the father was not providing that positive masculine guidance in his life. And so he <laughs> yield to the Hellraiser, <laughs> being, being a fan of the Hellraiser series. That's why I said the movie is a spoof of itself in many ways. And most people don't get that. That's why they don't care for the Hellraiser series. I love them. I love all, I'm, I am so looking forward to this one. The last one, and probably will be the last one because movies are done. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, <clears throat> yeah, the age of movies is just done. <laughs> Alright, well, that's all I got. You got anything else? No. How are you going to get uh, all your stuff? You have a lot of stuff more than me. How are you going to get all your stuff down to Poland? Down to what? Poland. There are ways. <laughs> She's referring to a comment I made earlier, folks. If Joe Biden becomes president, I'm going to have to find family in Europe and move because it will be the end of this country the rest of the world will follow suit but in moving to another country to a you know, uh, not a third world country but moving to Europe or some other country you at least will be buying yourself time but yeah if uh, Joe Biden becomes president you might as well kiss your freedom goodbye it, it will be Freedom itself will be a thing of the past. Look at the way they're campaigning. It's all hate Trump. Hate, vote for Biden. Why? Because Trump's an idiot. That's their whole campaign. Because they have nothing concrete. The man has, say what you want about him, but the man has kept his promises. He is doing everything he said he'd do. Maybe he's not... As filtered as he needs to be. But he is doing... You know... <laughs> when he says some of that stuff he says... I, 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 I cringe a little bit. But then I think, you know... If I were in his shoes, it's got to be frustrating. It's got to be frustrating for the man. I mean, because after all, he is just a man. And I don't know if he's using his own money to build that border wall. And this is another reason why. You got all these celebrities who live behind gated communities, Michelle. And they're telling you and me that we're wrong for putting up a border wall to keep drugs out of our country. We're wrong for that. But meanwhile, they're living in the life of luxury behind gated communities with armed guards. No wonder they want to take our rights uh, to, to have guns and protect ourselves away. They don't need it. They got, the, they got their armed guards in their gated communities. I'm sick of it. I'm just sick of Hollywood elites telling me how what what makes how what I have to do to be a good person. I'm sick of it, Michelle. I'm sick of it. I, I mean, I I wish you could see it. I I really do. I'm not the same person I was, Michelle. My eyes are open, wider than ever before in my life. I don't know where I'm going to be. You don't know where you're going to be? Yeah. Here, California. Here, California. I wish you don't have a phone, right? I have a house phone. Well, you don't have access to the internet, right? No. Okay. All right. Now there, there's a movement going on in this country right now, Michelle. And uh, if if you get your information from mainstream television news, you're not getting the truth, Michelle. I'm sorry. 
I, I don't, I can't think of any other way to explain it to you. But you are being fed an agenda. You are being fed a way of thinking. <sighs> All right. Probably should sign off. Unless you got something you want to say or add or anything. No. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> Michael, Michelle, and Stewie. <laughs> oh, there's Big Bird, too. And who else is here? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Pepe Le Pew! Pepe Le Pew! Another one they banned! They banned Pepe Le Pew! He's racist! <laughs> I love Pepe Le Pew! <laughs> uh, yeah, this cancel culture has just got to stop. This video is over 20 minutes long. It's got to stop too, at least for now. Thank you for watching, folks.